Okay, you're looking at a mirror piano. This particular one is made by Maynard Piano Company. And uh, I, I have yet to run the date on this piano. I'm going to guesstimate that this piano was made somewhere between 1905 and maybe 1915. That's just a guess. It could be made in the 20s, but um, just from the styling of the cabinet and... Uh, few other things that's going to be my guesstimate. And I'll look that up and I'll post it in the description section of this video. Um, this piano, uh, besides being a mirror piano, this particular piano was a player piano as well at one time. Uh, you can tell here by the uh, the doors that's where the player mechanism would have resided. It's long since been removed and you'll find that a lot with the mirror pianos. And let me just say real quick, when I say mirror piano, uh, this one exclusive to this company Maynard. That was actually a conversion that was done, but I'll, I'll talk on that a little bit more in a second. Um, here you'll see the uh, door for the pedals, uh, the pump, uh, the foot pedals for the pump for the pneumatic player. Um, that's where those would have resided, and they would fold up. You'd open the door when you want to use the piano, flop the uh, pedals down, and when you're done, you fold the pedals back into the sp open space you see there. Close that door up for storage. And this particular piano is a two-pedal piano. Now, it's a big deal these days to have two or three pedals. Um, and, you know, obviously you can tell this particular piano is oak. Um which is uh, it's really a pretty pretty veneer. I know it's real common, but it's a pretty veneer when it's uh, finished up right. And um, something else concerning the oak is uh, just because it's oak, you don't have to feel like you're tied to golden oak or, or brown. Um, that oak can be made any color. I've done oaks in red or, or mahogany color or reddish color or walnut color or just whatever you want. You can color that wood whatever you want to. But typically folks will will stain it a brown and, and have uh have a brownish color oak. Um this particular piano is in pretty good shape. Um I don't see a lot of loose veneer or anything. It's just got an older finish. It I'm gonna guess it was refinished when this conversion was done and I'll just tell you right now a little bit about the conversion. Um this piano started out as a regular old upright piano, your standard old piano, upright piano from that time period, uh, again with the exception of it being a player. And uh, this particular piano was, was what we call um, somewhat of an art case um, with, the, um, with the ornaments here and here. And um, if I remember correctly, this would be called an arts and crafts style. Um, just some minor ornamentation. Uh, you can see some of these styled uprights that are a lot more heavily ornate with that same theme. And um, you can uh, you can see here where this piano um, has the mirror attached. Um, it was actually cut in this area here. This this piece here that I that I'm moving here was actually attached up here. That's where it started out. It actually started out up here, and um, and it was cut. So this piece was actually cut in half, and you can actually see where the. Uh, the mortise is for the hinge, and it's actually the back part of of uh, this piece now. It doesn't even show. So um, on this particular piano, it must have had, instead of a one-piece lid, it had a two-piece lid, and this piece would have folded back like so. It would have folded back and over like so. But... Uh, you know, be that as it may, it was cut and um, and then brought down to this level. You can see here uh, where this was cut along here. And if I take the mirror off, 
you could actually see uh, a cut along here as well. And I may try to do that real quick. Um, but along here as well, this was cut. All of this along here was cut, cut off. And uh, this panel, this particular panel here, was actually extended up to to this point in this area. And um, and that's the place that housed the player. And um, when the conversion was done, that was all cut off. The goal of doing that was that these older uprights were no longer popular, they were just real bulky. And what was popular were the spinets and consoles and even the studios. And studios are really the most popular today, but uh, in that time, spinets were real popular in, into the 40s and 50s. And uh, consoles um, began to be popular as well, which were smaller upright pianos. So these fell out of favor, and uh, in an effort to make these look like the smaller pianos, um, they got cut. Hundreds and thousands of these were cut and uh, turn into these mirror pianos and um, and resold. There were a few companies that that's all they did. They would take these pianos and cut them up and, and retail them. And uh, they were popular for a time in the 50s and 60s, but uh, they're not. They're very hard to sell right now. And this particular piano actually belongs to someone. It's an heirloom, family heirloom piano. It has a lot of sentimental value. And that's uh, that's the reason I have it um, refinishing it for them now. As you saw on the inside there, it, uh, it really needs some work on the inside as well. But uh, it's, it's mainly for aesthetics now for this family and, uh, and its sentimental value. So it's just going to be refinished. But um, the... Uh, if I can take off the mirror real quick, I'll try to make this real quick. Cause I... Okay. Okay, now you can see here, see if I can back out a little bit. You can see here the, um, the cuts at the top that were made around the uh, top of the piano. They basically just followed the contour of the, the uh, plate, the gold harp. And there you can see the name of the piano, Maynard. Chicago cabinet grand. These are called cabinet grands. And um, get an idea here of, of what it looks like in the shape of scene. It really, it really wouldn't hurt this piano if it was going to be played to be fully restored. But again, this is going to be for aesthetics only. So um, that's why. But you can see here the cut, cut that was made on the uh, side of the cabinet. And that's basically it. So that's what you have here, a mirror piano. So when you see these pianos around, um, you can, you know, you now can have a, a better idea of what uh, where they came from. They didn't come from the factory like this. They were converted to this at a, at a later point. And it doesn't matter. Any brand was done that way. I've seen several Steinways done that way. I've seen the Chickering and Kanabi, which are really good pianos, done that way. Uh, Mason and Hamlin's so uh, it really didn't matter the brand of piano or whether it was a player or not um, they uh, they were popular at one time uh, about 50 years ago but they're no longer popular and the, the value of them are pretty much uh, pretty much shot now so um, that's just a quick uh, uh, run through of a mirror piano and actually this project too I'm gonna let this serve as an introduction to this particular project and I'm going to update this project along the way here over the next week and um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to move right along on this piano to get it done because it's got to be delivered at the end of the month so uh, just check back uh, for for some updates on this pian uh, this particular piano uh, you can find more information about what we do pianos.proboards.com um, also at uh, um, on this Beavers Piano TV channel on YouTube and um, quick uh, way to get some quick questions answered is uh, at Beavers Piano at Twitter.com and also we've just started up uh, a Facebook page fan page at Facebook.com slash Piano Rebuilder so um, if you have any questions uh, feel free to let me know
Thanks much.